So, Momzilla grabs the grub, goes ham on it, and flicks the leftovers to Junior. And Mom loses its dinners on the floor, folks. Kids crying his eyes out. Later, Pops asks wifey what's with the temper tantrum. She says she was stuck at the office all day. Pops raises an eyebrow, wondering who was at the dinner table. Then, later that night, their little girl's covers move. She sits up and bam, it's her dad, looking like the boogeyman himself. She's crying rivers while he just walks out. Next day, dad's acting like he's got memory loss, plays dumb about last night. Daughter's not having it, heads off to school, all grumpy. That night, she spills the beans to her sister. Mid-story, guess who shows up, dad? With a knife in his hand. Yikes. Dad blasts into the girl's hideout, waving a puny knife like he's auditioning for a horror flick. Big sis saves the day, or so we think, until dad pops out like a twisted game of whack-a-mole. With one swift hair polanthro combo, Big Sis is KO'd. Little Sis checks on Big Sis, but Dad's not done playing bad guy and chases her downstairs. Not to be outdone, Dad swaps his knife for a hammer. Those girls are scared stiff more so when Big Sis wakes up with a scream from upstairs. But Dad's not done, he swings that hammer like he's on a construction site and Little Sis, well, she chucks a frying pan at him, doesn't do much though, Dad keeps his hammer time going. Suddenly Dad's voice booms from downstairs, the girls are petrified as they watch dad climb the stairs, somehow clueless about his own violent escapade. As confusion reigns, mom picks up the dropped hammer. Mom goes hammer time on dad, channeling her best angry emoji look and then, like a diva, leaves stage right back to her room. Suddenly mom's voice booms from downstairs, making dad jump like a startled cat. He opens the door to a creepy vacant room plot twist, we've got a demon house guest. So, he's like, let's get holy up in here, and dials up a priest for an old-fashioned exorcism. In the dead of the night, Junior wakes up to pee, but surprise, surprise, our demon's gone doppelganger with a shiny new knife. But plot twist again, he's all bark and no bite, knife freezes mid-air and our mimic demon skedaddles out of there. The priest, prepared for demon shenanigans, knows he's out of his league. Doc, he phones up his mentor for some holy backup, but en route, a whole murder of crows goes kamikaze on their ride, Flying blind in a flurry of feathers, they take a disastrous dive off a cliff edge. Our maidens got chills, guys, those freaky. Someone's watching me kind fireplace springs to life behind her, doing its best thriller impersonation. Suddenly, she's sucked into the flames like a bad magic trick. Poof, she's fireplace food and off she goes, hitching a ride to the stars. Next, we've got the priest, looking like he's been in a slasher movie, making his comeback. He's throwing holy water around like it's Mardi Gras and spanking the eldest daughter with a switch, claiming she's got a case of the demonic blues. Mama begs him to stop, but the priest just mimics her favorite emoji, plot twist father freaky's now the possessed one. Dad steps up to take a swing at our crazy cleric, but instead, he's the one getting a free flying lesson courtesy of our resident demon. Just as it's lights out for Papa, the real priest waltzes in. Hitting the basement, they plan to make a run for it with Junior in tow only to find their darling girls hold a demon body swap. Priest pulls out a mirror, is it exorcism time? Nope, our demon's back in the priest. But wait, the priest grabs a crucifix and goes all Game of Thrones on himself, taking the demon down with him. And just like that, the family's cleared of their pesky demon problem.